Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to North American Martyrs for this Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join in our entrance antiphon, page 646, number 646 in the music issue. Enter the journey 646. Enter the journey, come to the soul. By God you are chosen, by name you are called. To follow the vision, carry the cross. Enter the journey of faith as the family of God. Enter the journey, the way may be long. Enter the journey, yet we are made strong. God's Spirit will guide us, God's gifts will unfold. Enter the journey of hope. Enter the journey, come to the soul. By God you are chosen, by name you are called. Carry the cross, cross on the journey of faith as the family of God. The journey, though lost and unsure, enter the journey, God's peace will be yours. to the soul. By God you are chosen, by name you are called to follow the vision, carry the cross, and so the journey of faith as the family of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we enter these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins with faith in the resurrection that Jesus brings new life to us in body, mind, and spirit. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O mighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so, and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless, then the second and the third married her, and likewise all of the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead Neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. The month of November in the Catholic Church sort of feels like it should belong to its own liturgical season. We still wear green, but sometimes I feel like there ought to be its own color, sort of like Advent that's coming up, sort of has that season of, of waiting for Jesus to spring into our life, that purple, that darkness that the light will come into, or the white of Easter celebrating that resurrection and new life that has begun. You know, I might uh, write a letter to Pope Francis and suggest maybe orange or brown or something like that sort of as the, the leaves are changing, right? So this green needs to fade, needs to fade away during the month of November. Because that's exactly what the church is turning to, beginning with All Saints Day, sort of looking towards the end that the saints have already achieved. And then All Souls Day, that end for which many that we know are going through death, passing from this life to the life to come, and throughout this month, really, uh, the theme is on death. 
and on the last things, on the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come. It's on, it's on the end, the end towards which everything is moving. And that end is Christ. And that's why the last feast of November is the feast of, of Christ the King, Christ King of the universe, the end of all things where God is all in all, where he sets everything right, where he reigns with all of his holy ones and raises us up. So this month of November, it's, it's a month of ending. And in fact, it does end the liturgical year. In the Catholic Church, we have our own little New Year's. It begins with Advent, that first day, sort of the beginning of a new year. And so since we're coming to the end, it would be good for us to meditate a little bit on our own end. Uh, not just end, when I say that, I don't just mean when you come to an end and it's finished, it's over, there's nothing left. But rather, when I say end, I mean the end for which we were created. The end towards which this story is heading. The end that makes everything complete and perfect. That's the end that's hinted at in, in all of our readings in this Sunday. Especially the readings concerning seven brothers. You notice that there was a connection between the first reading and the gospel. Having to do with seven brothers and this longing for the life to come. Those seven in the first reading who fought bravely under the Maccabees who were all put to death in that, that first kind of martyrdom. And all of them encouraged by their mother. And their mother especially is the heroine of that story, showing all of them to, of belief in something new, in a resurrection to come, the resurrection of the body. And then coming to the gospel, Jesus answering these Sadducees. These Sadducees were were Jews, yes, and yet they were missing something very essential in the message to Israel. And that message was the new life that God was calling us to. The Sadducees were very concerned with the political realm that they found themselves in. They were leaders of this political world in Israel, and yet had little to do with maybe that spiritual life, the life of the world to come. And so the Lord wants to speak to us about this resurrection of the body. What does this mystery of our faith really mean? What impact does it have on our daily lives here and now? Well, it's actually enormous. The resurrection of the body is, is one of those aspects of the Catholic faith that people from the outside will often take in and ridicule in some way. You know, they'll say, oh, you, you Christians, you believe in this reward that you get after this life. This life means nothing, and nothing matters here on this earth. And in fact, you know, you're just all living for this pretend life to come. And it's, you know, a fair ridicule, I suppose, in some ways. And yet when you look at the history of the world, you find that it's actually very, very flipped on its opposite. It's those who have no hope in the life to come that actually don't care about this world at all. And they care only about using this world to gain themselves the most power, pleasure, and possessions that they can. And they have no love what actually happens here and now. But it's those that are most concerned, that are most worried about the resurrection of the body, about what happens when we die, that are most concerned about this world as well, about what we do in the body. The mystery of this uh, is put down into words by one of our recent popes and saints, St. John Paul II, when he wrote Theology of the Body, T-O-B, Tob, as we know it in the church. It's, it's a wonderful set of teachings, very sometimes difficult to enter into, but very worthwhile to study. If you ever uh, get the chance to find some, some avenue, some media that you can learn a little bit more about theology of the body, it's well worth our time. Because it's, it explains this mystery, why we're so concerned, yes, with the life to come, but how that life bleeds over into the life we have now. Uh, the theology of the body, it begins with the body, looking at the body that we are created in body that has a face, a very particular face, that wants to be shown, and eyes that can recognize so many gestures of that face. Uh, we're created with hands that can fit another person's hands in them very nicely. You know, not many other animals are able to hold hands, hardly any. Their fingers are either too wide or too closed on each other. We have hands that can hold each other. When we look at this, we see that our bodies are made for communion. We're made for relationship. We're made for love. And that's not an accident. Jesus 
You know, it always goes back to the beginning, to Genesis, uh, to explain many things in the scriptures. There's no difference in Genesis when God created us in his own image and likeness. Uh, he himself is a communion of persons, a communion of love, and so he made that, made us according to that plan of communion. And he made us in bodies, though, bodies that sort of serve as a window into the soul. You know, many uh, people don't, don't necessarily care what, what their bodies are all about. They matter more, you know, who I am underneath. And yet, uh, the body is the window to the soul. You are your body as much as you are your soul. When I point to you, I can't point to your soul anywhere, but I can point to your body. And I can't see what you're feeling, I can't see what you're thinking, but your body can show me that, especially if you desire to reveal yourself to me. And so the body is so important then in entering that communion of love. The body is a sacrament of the soul, uh, John Paul II goes on to say. Uh, sacraments we know very well in uh, the church, sacraments being those visible signs that show forth an invisible reality. And so in the church, we, has, we have this great language of the body, uh, of bodily things raising us to spiritual realities. A and yet we're fallen. Now, because we're bodily creatures, uh, we have this ability to, to use bodily things for our own pleasure, for our own gain, instead of loving. Uh, to love being always to give, to give of ourselves. Whenever we think of uh, giving, you know, we have, it's a very bodily motion. Uh, we have these hands to give. We have this face to speak words that others may hear. Again, our bodies are designed to give of ourselves. And yet we can also use them to take. And so with this theology of the body and, and the recognition that we're made for communion, we're made for love, that is the end that we're drawn towards. It means everything we do in the body here and now is so important, is so necessary. Nothing is too small. And so it transforms the way we live here and now. If I am my body as much as I am my soul, then the things I do in my body matter. And the things I do to my body matter. The body sort of holds the record of the, of the soul. It sort of keeps track of everything that the soul has done. It gets imprinted on the body uh, that, you know, 10 slices of pizza I ate this week watching all those football games. It leaves its mark on, on the body. Uh, and also, and when we sin, that doesn't just leave a mark on the soul. It leaves its mark in the body. The things we watch, uh, the actions we take, uh, it actually conforms us in a certain way to following that rut. And yet, so also with sin, so also with grace. Uh, God, in the body, Jesus took on flesh to sanctify the body, to sanctify everything we do as bodily creatures, that it become an instrument of grace. And so to enter more and more into this bodily world is a Catholic thing to do. And again, that's why uh, so many of the saints in history were so concerned with the world around them, because they had this appreciation for the world that was created by God and that was returning to God, a world that was created for communion with God, a world that is a sacrament of the invisible God. And so as we live out this final liturgical season of the year, a season focused on the end to come, let's learn as well to live in our body as that temple and sacrament of the Holy Spirit, uh, that everything we do matters, and because it matters, God has a special plan for it, a special plan for your life, for your soul, uh, for your body, and to become attuned to that plan as we do all these bodily things in the church, we approach uh, the body of Christ, the sacrament of our salvation, and let it transform us body, mind, and soul into uh, the bride of Christ, the church, which will be present there in the end uh, to adore God forever.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. How glorious is the peace and hope of the resurrection. So let us pray with hearts set free from foolish doubt and hesitation, because we believe in the promise of the one who rose again in our frail flesh to eternal splendor. For an outpouring of the Holy Spirit of truth and faith in the church today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations where freedom of religion is impeded by bigotry and ignorance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mutual respect and understanding between Christians and Jews and followers of Islam, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have entered their last hours on this earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Irene Rezac, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the needs of all here present, for which we now pause to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of the living to whom all are in fact alive, grant the petitions we bring before you through Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 469, located in the songbook, All is Well with My Soul, number 469.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal, for having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with the North American martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof. Not only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 446, located in the songbook, Amazing Grace, number 446.
Let us pray. Nourished by the sacred gifts, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Say, Michael. Our closing hymn is number 443, located in the songbook, How Can I Keep From Singing, number 443. Please join in our thanksgiving prayer. O oh, sacrament, most holy.